What's going on YouTube? In today's video, I'm going to show you how I installed cabinet lights at a very affordable price. Now, I only spent about, actually it was probably less than $50, and that even includes the smart outlets that I used so that these automatically turn on and off at certain times. I could even go into an app on my phone and turn them on and off via the app. So that considers these smart cabinet lights, I guess? There's many reasons why you'd want to install cabinet lights. One is for the aesthetics. As you can see here, it's really nice, provides a little bit of light inside my kitchen area. I don't have any other lights on, and it's just a soft light in the background that allows it to look a lot better. Also, when you're cooking and baking and prepping your food for dinner, lunch, whatever, it provides more light underneath the cabinets. So that way, you're able to see a lot more what you're doing, and it just, it just adds to the overall brightness of being able to see what you're doing. So these are the items that I purchased on Amazon. I got the LED strips. I threw away the box already, but I got the LED strips here. And then I also got these little packages with, they come with solderless connections. That's really nice because as you can see here, you have two connections here, a positive and a negative. And when you cut the strip to the length you need, you can take these connectors and connect them to the copper, uh, the copper spots here, the copper connector here, and you can wire up to these so you can wire them up in series and run them in parallel um, I guess would it be series or parallel parallel I think it's series correct me if I'm wrong in my comments section go ahead and do it either way you'll connect one strip to another and keep going until you're done now as you can see here there's multiple copper areas where you can cut and they even have a black line oops focus they even have a black line so you can cut them in half this allows you to cut these to length. Now, as you can see, I have an area over here. And then I have an area right here where there's lights here and over there. And you're probably wondering, how did I jump the power from this cabinet area to this cabinet area? The simple and short answer is I did not. You probably could run it up here on the windowsill area or above the window uh, molding. And it probably wouldn't look as good, but what I went, ended up doing is I took power off of this outlet right here behind the coffee maker and ran it up the wall and made another outlet at the very top there. So this right here is powered by one outlet. And then this whole section right here is powered by the outlet that's actually above the microwave. So I got smart and I was like, hey, there's an outlet right there above every microwave. And then if I wanted to put one up there, which I'm thinking about doing too, there's an outlet behind the refrigerator. That allows me to put them up there and power each section. And then these are all wired together. And then top and bottom are wired together. The next difficult task is how I got the wiring from, as you can see, there's a little difference in height here. How did I get it from that cabinet to that cabinet? that cabinet to that cabinet, and all the way down here. Also, how do I get from the top to the bottom? That's actually easier than you think. And I'll show you what I did. So for instance, over here, I started at the very top. I started right here. Here's the outlet right here. Don't worry about the little mess here. That was a little accident, cut too much. I can cover it up with a larger faceplate here. But I started right here. Here's my smart switch. Here's the plug-in, and I started it, came around down here. And then I drill a little hole right here. And then I don't know if you can see, but right there, I don't know if you can see that, I drilled a hole and it came out right here. So it literally is going down this cabinet inside and coming out right there. So you can't even see it when you're down on the ground. And then it comes to this LED strip. And then what I did is to get it to the bottom of the cabinet, I wired it up to a wire or two wires here. And then there's this little, mine actually had this little kind of a gap here between the two cabinets. And so I was able to run it down between the two cabinets here. And there you go. And there you go. You see it right here. I drilled the hole down here and fished it through there with my fish sticks. And then I kind of just hot glued it in this little crease here or crevice, and anywhere I wanted the wires to stay, I used a staple gun to put some staples in to hold the wire up. 
and then there you go. There's the connecting or uh, the LED and the connection right there. And then I drilled a hole between the two here. Wired them up. There's the second one. Now on the underside of the cabinets, that sucks. But that might happen if you have it painted. We painted these cabinets. But this area right here, this is all double sticky tape. And these LEDs came with the double sticky tape. At the very top of the cabinets, it's very dirty and I didn't want to spend the time cleaning it so the double sticky tape would uh, stay. So I just went ahead and stapled those down too as well. And then for these cabinets, I pretty much did the same thing here. I ran it down between the two here. And then for, to get it from this cabinet to that cabinet, I was able to run it between, there's a, a gap between this and the wall. So I was able to run it behind the cabinet and up through to the back side of the cabinet here. And then over here, I was able to do it too as well. So I got lucky there. If not, I was just gonna run it through, through inside the cabinet here. So as you see over here, I was not as lucky. So I had to drill a hole in here and then drill a hole up here so I can get it from here to up here. And then I also have a hole drilled back here because here is my microwave and that's where the outlet is. So what's really nice about these LEDs are, well, most, I think all LEDs is I don't have to like run them all in one series. So I was able to tie off, actually, I think it's over there. I was able to tie off a wire to come over here, even though I had started the LEDs from here over there. So instead of coming, starting right here where the outlet is and running it that way, and then running a wire way over there from over there to here, I just ran it that way. When I was done, I just, it just didn't, it just ended. And then I just tied off over here and duplicated it and tied up in more wires to it to come over here. So on this style cabinet, I went ahead and just put it at an angle like that. I would definitely play around like wire one up and play around with it because the position of the LED strip and the depth of the cabinet does matter as far as how much light it outputs. I feel like the closer you get to the end here, the more light it puts out. But eventually, if you get too close to the end here, it shields it and it cuts it off. So there's like a happy medium. You play around with it and see what you like the best here. So another thing is I went from this cabinet to this cabinet and I couldn't or I didn't want to run the wire underneath here like I did over there. So instead, I went ahead and just teed off up here and ran the wire. Whoops. Actually, I don't even know where it went. Right there. And so it went from the upper cabinet again and just ran this. So this one's only ran by a wire that came from up there versus just starting up there, going all the way down here and down and then all the way across. So that kind of gives you an idea of you don't have to run it all in one sweep or one, I don't even know how to explain it. You don't have to run it, start at one area and continue it. You can kind of uh, make your connections in the middle of it to power other things. Now, this kit comes with some connectors. It is not enough for you. You can solder onto those connections if you wanted to. If you're good with a soldering iron, I guess you don't have to be good, but I'm not the best with soldering and that would give, that would be tricky for me. But if you can solder, you don't even have to get these connectors. And as a matter of fact, you're probably better off without them. But I didn't, I didn't solder them and I use these and they work just fine for me. They do provide you with the LEDs, some little kind of a wire organizers, not even enough because this is 37 feet, but that's not even enough to hold those up. So I went ahead and just used a staple gun to hold the wires up and then hot glue anywhere where I really needed it. Now I did purchase two of these. It wasn't because I had more than 37 feet. Well, I don't know if I had more than 37 feet, but that certainly wasn't the reason because I didn't think I had enough with the 37 feet. The reason why is because I needed an outlet plug-in for there and an outlet plug-in for up there. 
So what's really nice about these is I went ahead and used Wise smart plugs. And so you can get those for about $20 for two of them. I'll link them in the description with the LEDs and those connectors. But for $20, it allows you to use, I believe you can use a home kit with it, but you can use Wise's iPhone or Android app and set up automations with that. And so and you can turn them on and off uh, through the app too. But what I ended up doing is I hooked it up to Home Assistant. So if you have Home Assistant, that uh, you obviously already had your gears turning in your head on that. But I hooked up to Home Assistant and these automatically turn on by automations. And then I also have a button. So that way, if my wife wanted to turn them on during the day and they're not scheduled to come on, she can go ahead and do it manually with that button. Now that's a little bit different, uh, Home Assistant, that's completely different than what this video is about. Um, there's so many different things out there for that. The Wise app will allow you to do it through the app and you can also set up the automations to that. We, we literally have them come on about 30 minutes before sunset and then I turn them off at 10 p.m. like I said at the beginning of the video. So here's kind of a view of what they look like with the lights on. Now I have, they're different colors because the lights that I have are more yellow or just a standard lights that you have in your house. And the lights that I picked for the LEDs were the more, um, the bright lights, the bright or bright whites. Uh, so if you wanted to, you could, on, on the link below, I'll link the ones for the other ones or the more yellow ones, like the lights up here. Uh, so you can choose which ones you want. You can also get uh, RGB ones too. I decided against the RGB ones just because of the fact that there was really no reason for me to get those. I like the RGB. I wouldn't use them as much as I think I would, but my wife would definitely not use them. So it really wouldn't work out very well for me. But as you can see, look how much more light it puts off underneath the cabinets compared to with the lights off from the cabinet. It doesn't take much effort to really wire this up. I stapled the tops, I stapled the top uh, LED strips down and then I used their double sticky tape and I've had these up for probably about two months now and the double sticky tape hasn't come down. I would highly suggest cleaning the underneath of the cabinets or wherever you're gonna use the sticky tape uh, that it comes with. I highly suggest cleaning that where you're gonna stick it to as best as you can so that way it's, it stays up there. And then make sure you press it on there and make sure it's on there. So run your hand across the whole strip Make sure it's stuck all the way on there and stuck fairly well, and you should be fine. If you come to a situation where they're coming down a little bit, like right there, I think it's because it's got the connector there, I would go ahead and just put a staple right where it's coming down to kind of help hold the weight. Like I said, I will link these in the description below. The only reason why mine cost 50 bucks or a little bit more than 50 bucks was because I had to buy two of these because I wanted two different outlets or I needed two different outlets and so I bought two of these, so that was a little bit over 50 bucks. And then these were about five bucks each, or five bucks a, a, a package. So go ahead and calculate how many you're gonna need on that. And I'll link all this in the description below so you can check it out in current pricing. I will also put the Wise plugs on there as well. Those are 10 bucks each. I think they sell them in kits of two, but they're 20 bucks, pretty, pretty cheap. And the Wise setup is pretty easy to use. If this video helped you out in any way, give me a thumbs up on the video. If you have any questions, comments, or even opinions, maybe you saw something that you would have done better to help others out, go ahead and put it in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. I'd also love to hear about your, uh, your journey on setting it up for yourself. If this is your first time to my channel, please consider subscribing and I will see you next time.